Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru WRX STI. And this isn't just any STI because I have an access port. So we're going to be answering two main questions. What's this car like to drive? And the sub question of that being what is that like related to the previous generation STI? And then our second question is what's it like to drive with a tune? Okay, so diving right into it, I've got the ECU settings at stock, so basically this is a bone stock uh, Subaru STI 2015, so we're going to see how it drives. And the first thing that I noticed that I really do like is that they've maintained really good visibility. The previous generation had fantastic visibility, this is exactly the same case. Out the front, out the rear, checking your blind spot, you've got good visibility all the way around, which I love. Uh, you know, a lot of cars are willing to sacrifice that, and I'm glad that Subaru hasn't. So what are the key performance changes of this vehicle versus the 2014 and previous generation STIs. Well, the engine is exactly the same, and so the power levels are getting a bit dated. In fact, 10 years ago, this car made just five horsepower less. So 305 is good, uh, but by today's standards, you know, they're starting to get sedans and things like that that are pushing these power levels. So it would be nice to see a power upgrade from Subaru. That said, there are, of course, aftermarket options to make that happen, but then you're, of course, voiding your warranty. So as far as I can tell, the transmission is pretty much the same. You've got the 2.5 liter with 305 horsepower, 290 pound-feet of torque, matched with a six-speed manual transmission, the only available transmission for this car, which is great because the manual's pretty good. Uh, and it feels nearly identical to the one that I have, so this actually has the short throw shifter as well. But basically, Subaru's manual transmissions, they're pretty notchy. Uh, the clutch pedal, especially in the SDI, effort is pretty high. Uh, and then effort for changing gears especially with the short throw, it's also decently high. And you see I sprayed the windshield there. That's because they've changed it from pulling the windshield in to pushing it up to get it to do one swipe. So I'm used to my own Subaru STI, and this one is a little bit different uh, in the way that the windshield works. Who cares? Now, the biggest difference is going to come in when you get to a corner. So here we are going into a corner, and of course the one day it's rained this month in Oregon is today. But... You know, going around this corner, you notice the body stays really flat. Some of the changes that they've made for cornering, it's got a stiffer chassis, it has a stiffer suspension, so both springs and shocks, and it has uh, torque vectoring now. So, you know, when you're cornering hard, it'll break that inside wheel to help you maneuver around it. It also has a significantly tighter steering ratio, so now it's 13 to 1. And what this does is it makes it much more quick uh, to turn in. You don't need to turn the wheel as much to get the vehicle to turn and it does feel a bit more precise. Now I have noticed with this vehicle and I'm not sure if it's because it has uh, aftermarket wheels which are offset and slightly narrower tires but I have noticed that when you're kind of at the limit of grip uh, and you're kind of turning pretty hard the steering doesn't feel totally sure of itself. It's got a little bit of wobble in there where it kind of wants to wiggle left or right and it doesn't want to stay planted at the angle you have. And it's not severe and it's not something uh, super noticeable, but there is a little bit of uncertainty when you kind of corner in pretty hard. Now, when I say this thing could use more power, that's simply just to get with the times. It's not that it's not quick because it definitely is fast. Uh, when you put your foot down, you know, you do get a slight amount of turbo lag but that said, it is seriously quick, especially once you get up into those higher RPMs. And this steering, you know, it does feel significantly better than the previous generation. I do like the tighter steering ratio, so you don't have to turn the wheel quite as much, and it just feels more responsive overall. And I believe a big part of that is just the stiffness of the suspension and the chassis, so the turn in is very quick, very precise. There's just a little bit of uncertainty in the wheel when you're kind of pushing it harder. Now some other changes between this and the previous generation STI, this is a little bit more aerodynamic, so a drag coefficient of about 0.33. And another change is that they've lowered it a bit, so ground clearance is now 4.9 inches versus 5.9 inches. So depending on what you use it for, you know, if you're purely going track-based with your vehicle, then that's great. If you want to go off-road and kind of into the more rally realm that this car is kind of made for, uh, you know, reduced clearance isn't necessarily a good thing. 
The other change is there is, of course, no hatchback model, which is disappointing. Uh, you know, I drive a 14 hatchback. I specifically bought the 14 over the 15 uh, because I wanted a hatchback model. That was purely my reasoning. Um, that said, you know, this does feel better from a driving perspective uh, rather than my car, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with just the stiffness of it uh, and the chassis changes they made as well as the steering ratio changes. stays exceptionally flat in the corner and I notice a little bit of understeer in my car when I push it pretty hard and this one doesn't seem to experience that quite as bad. So to answer the question, how does it drive? It's great, it's fast, the steering feels pretty good, uh, and it stays incredibly flat and can corner quite well. There are some quirks about it. You know, the steering is actually pretty heavy uh, compared to most vehicles I've driven. I'd say this is probably one of the heaviest steering ratios out there. Also, uh, this vehicle gets pretty terrible fuel economy, 17 in the city and 23 on the highway. By today's standards, that's pretty bad. And so that's another thing to consider, you know, terrible fuel economy in this versus the WRX, which does get uh, significantly better fuel economy because it's got that new engine. Worth mentioning is that the interior is definitely an improvement. You've got the addition of digital gauges and a nicer infotainment system. The seats do feel a bit more firm than the previous generation, but still very comfortable and hold you in well. And finally, the optional Harman Kardon audio system is actually a significant improvement over the previous generation. Much better sounding audio with the optional upgrade. One other small thing, which maybe isn't even worth mentioning, but the rear brakes are slightly smaller, 0.2 inches uh, less in diameter than the previous generation STI. So a little bit smaller brakes, but nothing noticeable, uh, you know, when you're putting your foot down on the brakes. Brake pedal feels still pretty good, so you've got, you know, it's pretty stiff, uh, not too much travel, but a good progressive rate to it, so feedback uh, is very good, and, you know, you can definitely modulate it pretty well, depending on, you know, the speed you're going and how fast you want to brake and things like that. So I'm going to straighten out, come to a stop, traction control off, no fancy launch control or anything like that. And there we are. Okay, it's time to have a little bit more fun. So we're going to be using the Cobb Access Port version 3, and we're going to be installing the Stage 1 91 Octane map. So here we can see it changing the ECU mapping. 13%, 15%, going through and changing the factory data. Okay, so stage one tune, let's see how it drives with this. And one thing worth mentioning is that while I was in the new WRX, uh, it had a decent amount of rev hang, and I definitely don't notice that, or at least not nearly as bad uh, in the STI, and that of course, you know, it has the older engine um, and perhaps older tuning, and so that's just how it is. But it is worth mentioning that the throttle rev hang is much better on uh, the STI than in the WRX version. So if I shift this down in second gear, it's definitely got some more power. Uh, I notice, I think, a decent amount more torque in the lower RPMs than on the stock map. It doesn't seem to accelerate all that much faster as far as G-forces, uh, but you seem to get that torque earlier on, and so it makes it feel a bit more responsive, uh, and it definitely is quicker overall. <laughs> it's quick. Great brakes. Dropping it down into second. Wow, a lot of torque. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it feels great in this stage one tune. Just feels a little bit more alive, more torque, less turbo lag. Wow. It's an incredible machine. bit of that steering wobble that I was referencing earlier. It just doesn't feel 100% confident when you're hard into the turn. Just a little bit of wobble back and forth in it. 
but man, even in this conservative 91 octane stage one tune, I mean, I think it, it helps with the turbo lag. There's definitely still turbo lag, but it helps with it. And then I think, you know, it, it helps bring that torque curve over to the left a little bit. So you don't have to wait to such high RPMs before you're getting into boost and getting a significant amount of torque. Okay, so we're gonna do a launch with the stage one tune. I've got the traction control off. It's in sport sharp mode, the differential's in auto. We're gonna to come to a stop. There's a rev limiter set at 5300 for launch control. So it'll bounce off that a little bit and then I'll drop the clutch. Wow. That was fast. So thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.